Hello and welcome to Africa 54. I'm Chamberlain, so I channel television here in Lagos. I'm joined by my colleague at Voice of America in Washington. Thanks, I'm Esther Gidu. You are at our global headquarters in Washington, D.C. Happy to be with you again for another edition of Africa 54. Let's start off with a look at private investment in Africa. Chamberlain brings you that story from Lagos. The African Development Bank says private investment is a key element in addressing the continent's development challenges. Speaking at a meeting in Abuja, ahead of the African Investment Forum, Senior Director of AFDB Nigeria, Mr. Ibrahim Afor, highlights Nigeria's significant contribution to overall investments secured for the continent last year. This year's edition, scheduled for November, aims to drive more investments into the region. Financing Africa's development needs will require between 600 and 700 billion dollars per annum, according to the African Development Bank's African Economic Outlook for 2018. About 130 billion dollars worth of infrastructure will be required yearly to bridge the gap. And uh, we are, we're aiming to about two How to attract investment through financing, especially from development institutions, is the reason why government officials, as well as development finance experts, are rubbing minds here. Even with gross international reserves of $45 billion and a pension fund of about $8 trillion naira, Nigeria will need a considerable amount of private finance to bridge its cumulative infrastructure needs of about $3 trillion by 2024. The time for bridging this gap, we believe, is now. The senior director at the African Development Bank gives a breakdown of how Africa, West Africa, and Nigeria fared in attracting investments during the 2018 edition of the Africa Investment Meeting. Out of the 63 watering deals presented at the forum, Nigeria had five deals worth $7 billion. This represents 14.9% of the total deals accounted for the, for the continent, and 43% of the accounted for in the West Africa region. But we can do better this year. So in but in spite of these achievements, suggestions were raised on how to improve investments, especially in Nigeria. For those of us in development and finance, we think that the issue is not lack of funding. Uh, actually, there are so much funding moving around looking for good investments. So the issues are one, developing bankable projects, and two, improving our financial education. While Africa continues to demonstrate economic resilience with the growth of 4% in 2019, there is a focus on Nigeria on taking steps that will make the nation's economy more robust within the next two years. After months of consultation with stakeholders, President Buhari has signed the landmark Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement, including Nigeria, among other African nations except Eritrea, in the establishment of an economic bloc that aims to be the largest free trade area. The agreements, according to the AU, could lead to about 60% boost in intra-African trade by 2022. Let's get more now on this trade question with uh, Bamidile Ayemibo. He is the chairman of the expert group at the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Welcome to Africa 54. How did you receive this signing? Very excited, actually. Very excited because I knew the president was about going before he stopped. Um, I even had the advance uh, team had gone, that was March 21 last year, because of the concerns of NLC, MAN, and some other private sector yeah. uh, operators. So I was excited because I think it's something we have to do. If we are the major beneficiary in West Africa, I'm hoping that we'll also be a major beneficiary in the entire African uh, agreement. Do you think the continent and the country is ready for this? I think so. I think so because uh, I want some people that look, we used to say because the road to your, to your house is bad, you not drive the car. We can fix all our issues and we're not going to fix it in a day. This is time bound. We need to begin to do something to grow trade in Africa. We can't depend on the West or the Asia. Europe did it and today 
contributing over 60 percent of world trade just 500 million people eu alone and we are over 1.2 billion people so i think we can do much more if we just begin to trade among ourselves well you know some of the concerns raised uh i mean they they, they tell us that infrastructure development is a challenge yeah now uh according to fdc they say nigeria requires 15 billion dollars that's about 4.59 trillion naira at 306 to the dollar for 15 years that's annually Probably if we do. need to adequately develop our infrastructure yeah yet you say we're ready uh, we're ready we're ready in the sense that same challenge we are faced with other african nations are facing it so is the what you have said is not peculiar to nigeria and i feel that some of those infrastructure it becomes easier for development for funding to come into those infrastructure even within africa because africa is a local country so we need infrastructure within africa both rail and roads to be built for this to happen so i think that we don't have to wait for those things to be fixed in west africa we are contributing 40 percent of the trade in west africa and we are having this issue last report released by the um, national bureau of statistics shows that non-oil export grew to 13 percent manufacture out of that was about 10 percent in the economy, we have issues, and we are still having 10% manufactured goods. And most of our goods to West, to West Africa is manufactured. So the one we'll be shipping, we definitely not be shipping commodities to Africa. Yeah, but we're going to be shipping manufactured goods. Some of the data released by, I think, the Minister of Trade, yeah. they indicated there that Nigeria happens to high uh, rank number one in terms of importing services into the country yeah. and not exporting or manufacturing products. No, we only we're exporting manufacturing products. I mean, MBS data quarter one shows that we're exporting 13 percent. No, last year overall, 6.2 percent non-oil export contribution. I'm, I'm looking at non-oil now because that's mainly what we ship to Africa. And now we're having 13 percent and manufacturing. I was excited because of the manufacturing content, which was 77 percent of the non-oil export content. Because what we're going to be shipping to West Africa, what we're going to be shipping to other Africa that we're heading to West Africa is going to manufacture goods. In spite of our challenges, we're going to benefit from AFCFTA. The only concern I think we should be worried about is putting a strong team in place for monitoring and implementation. That should be our worry. It's not that we should not sign. But remember, man, yes. even LCCI, yes. they raise concerns yes. about some of this, yes. particularly the manufacturing sector, yes. the uh, power supply, yes. what formats, what policies have they put in place to yes. ensure that Nigeria is ready for this kind of uh, agreement? I, I, strong, I didn't know the eventually the agreement we reached with man. I know LCCI was for it, only that we said it should be done conditionally. Now, man was the major uh, party that said, look, you should not go ahead. So I, agree. I am very sure that if I had an agreement with the federal government on what the federal government need to do, the federal government are committed to it for man to go ahead and agree and do it. We have not signed, we have lost out. So now that we have signed, I think the conversation should change. What should Nigeria begin to do to ensure we implement? Some have said, oh, people will come around and set up in the nearby countries and they will set up there, they will now, that they won't come to Nigeria, they come down power. And I said, look, if they set up there, it does not mean it will affect us because if there are products they are producing there that we don't want in Nigeria, the agreement allows us 10% of HS code in the world. There are about 5,000 plus HS code in the world. 10% of that is allowed for us to say this no-go area for now. So we can decide to say, look, these are the areas we don't want you to come into our economy and destroy the industry in this sector. And we can make that available when we are ratifying and sending it to the AU. So we can actually still protect ourselves reasonably. Even if those people are coming to set up in nearby countries, I'm sure the world they will be shipping to us are things we need wish we not be part of the temp center all right then we'll leave it at that uh, babadili ayimibo is a uh, chairman expert group at the lagos chamber of commerce and industry thank you much, chairman, thank, much, chairman. <laughs> thank you for your time all right thank you very much we want to know what you think about africa 54 and the stories we cover join the conversation on facebook and check out our headlines 24 7 on voaafrica.com coming up Following foreign and local investments, motorcycle taxi companies are racing to control the busy streets of Lagos.